So, Heather, in the last segment, we were talking about Nancy Pelosi's proclamation that um, impeachment is more or less off the table. Um, we both disagree with it, I think, uh, on similar reasonings. But, I mean, you know, we're living in an era where I think George Bush should have been impeached. I think that um, it may not have maybe shouldn't have happened in 2006, uh, but maybe uh, or, you know, you can be impeached in retrospect. And um the idea is less about getting Donald Trump. I mean, uh, you know, George Bush out of office in 2008. Obviously, he's out of office or I should say 2009 when Obama actually takes over. Uh, he's out of office. But the bottom line is the American public. There is a vacuum that is created when you have m- massive malfeasance and the circle is not closed. You create a vacuum when you do not say, this is why this happened. These are the players who were instrumental in making it happen. This is wrong, and we're holding them to account. When you don't do that, you create a vacuum that allows for, uh, you know, the narrative to get twisted in a way, right? Where Donald Trump is not the elite, where he is the one who's going to punish the elite, um, where Steve Mnuchin ends up being the Treasury Secretary instead of, you know— um, the guy who's supposed to be in prison, you know, maybe doing uh, other cellmates uh, accounting work. I mean, this is uh, this is all very problematic. And, and, and the way that that Pelosi left it, I think it's even more so. I don't know if you have any more to talk about this in terms of this well, accountability, but it, it, it's a real problem. It, it is a real problem. And I agree with you. And I'd even go back to our earlier conversations about pardons. The fact that uh, Richard Nixon was pardoned, I think, led to a, you know, that was one thing that led to this idea that there's some kind of impunity for presidents uh, who, you know, commit crimes while in office. That's why we call uh, a moral it, hazard, right? Yeah, I mean, that... it's definitely. They, use, they love to talk about moral hazard for some poor schmuck who buys, you know, a house and he can't afford his mortgage, you know, because they're offering some, you know, some great deal. But they don't talk about moral hazard in this way. And it seems obvious. I mean, remember when Obama came in, you know, he said, we don't want to look in the rearview mirror. Big, big, right. big mistake. You know, you have to do that. You've got to, and I'm not saying you go on, you know, some kind of crusade to, you know, get to lock her up. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not for that. I mean, obviously, you know, there are limits and we have disagreements and some of this is political and some of it is ideological and we have different ways of looking at this. But you can't just, just sweep things under the rug over and over again and expect that, you know, that people aren't going to be onto it and go, hey, you know, no problem. I can do this. And the fact that the Republicans, and I'm not even blaming Donald Trump in a lot of ways for what's for what's happening now, because he's perfectly in his, you know, it right in thinking that he can get away with all this. Right. All the Republicans are backing him. They're telling him no problem. Keep going. Nobody's saying a word to him on his own side. It, it looks all partisan from his point of view. And so he figures, hey, this is the way it's done. I mean, he's an idiot, of course, you know, so he doesn't understand or care about things like, you know, history or legacy or anything like that, which does, you know, motivate some people in public life. But, you know, he is... He that this is this is the new way of doing things, and Donald Trump is just sort of the perfect example of it. And if you don't have, if you have people saying, "Well, we can't do this because it's divisive," it's the same thing as saying we don't want to look in the rearview mirror, or I'm pardoning Richard Nixon, or or you know George H. W. Bush pardoning all the Iran Contra right. people. I mean, this just goes on and on and on, and everybody says, well, you know, no biggie. Go ahead, you know, nothing, what's going to happen to you? I mean, there's a few, you know, a, sort of fringe players who end up doing some time, like Manafort, maybe Roger Stone or something like that, but, you know, Trump figures, hey, whatever, you know. I mean, a few casualties for the team, not a big deal. So, I mean, this is terrible, and, and, and you know, and it's not just in politics. It's obviously happening in business. And, you know, these people get rewarded for, you know, re- destroying their companies by getting these, well, look at somebody like Les Moon or, right. or, or even Megyn Kelly, you know, who, you know, fails at her, <laughs> at her TV show and gets leaves with 60-some million dollars. I mean, there's just something truly, what? you know, <laughs> that, they, that people at this elite level can just do whatever they want, fail, succeed, commit crimes, do whatever, and they just keep making more and more money and getting more and more accolades. It's just unbelievable. And, you know, what, what strikes me sort of like thematically that is similar here is uh, part of the, the culture, and, and this may be a little far afield, but is this um, college admissions cheating scandal yeah, same where thing. you have, I mean, what I find fascinating about this is that there is 
uh, there is still, it seems to me, implicit, particularly in the coverage of this, is that we are protecting the broader structure of what is, it seems to me, equally problematic, if not more so in that it affects, it is systemic, right? So what I'm saying is that in the context of this uh, cheating scandal, it's like going after Bernie Madoff and saying he's the reason why we had the financial crisis. Right. He is, he's a bad actor. He stole from people. The guy obviously should go to jail, et cetera, et cetera. But there was a more systemic problem that existed, and we're paying attention to the sh- sort of shiny object. I definitely think, obviously, these people should be um, you know, prosecuted to the full extent of the law, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, there was a uh, U.S. attorney uh, who was announcing this, these, uh, you know, the, the results of this criminal investigation. I think 39 um, uh, parents were, uh, you know, indicted. Uh, they said uh, this is, you know, fraud. This was not somebody donating a building to get their kid into a, a university. And they, hey, you know, guess what? That's super, super corrupt as well, except for we're using that as the standard of saying it's not, you know, this is this is really wrong. Uh, you know, and it's not like <laughs> doing business as normal, which is somebody just going in and paying the money directly to the college, I guess, and a little bit more money. I mean, that's, you know, um, and the, it's this like this ignorance that seems to be well, on display I, about the two tiered sort of justice and fairness system we have in this country. And we just got about 25 seconds left and we can talk more about it uh, in, in the next segment. But that is what Nancy Pelosi is projecting when she says uh, impeachment's off the table. It says the apparatus to hold to us to account, the apparatus that makes our society fair is irrelevant if it is in some way, you know, Uh, an expense to uphold that I think is highly problematic. We got to take a quick break. Uh, Digby, if you'll join me on the other side, we got two more segments of news and we could probably fill them about 10 times over. We'll be right back after this Sam Cedar ring of fire radio.